Okay guys, so hopefully this will be a short video. It's just on how to read a vernier caliper. So I've kind of chopped the caliper in half here because I wanted to look at it first for a, uh, for a second when you get ready to start. My rooster apparently says hi. He knows I'm recording. Anyway, I want you to look at a couple things. There's three different measurements we can take off of a vernier caliper like this one. One of the things we can measure is this. This is Inside those, inside the jaws, we can measure the outside diameter of something. Uh, of course, you can also measure rectangular blocks or anything else. Now, the jaws up at the top, and this is usually like I am going to say for measuring like diameter. We usually use these up at the top. Those actually are for measuring like the inside diameter of an object. And so that's what those are used for. You still read everything off the same scale. It's just you can measure three different things. And if you're wondering, well, what's the third? Outside diameter, inside diameter. On the back, you'll notice as you use it, like this piece of metal kind of protrudes out of the base. And we can actually use that piece. Well, I guess you could measure more, but obviously you can measure depth using that little piece of metal if you wanted to. Now, so that you get an appreciation for the caliper, and I do need to kind of go over a ruler for a second. Now, you'll notice there's not much to it here. There's this little uh, window that you see, and you'll see this. You'll see these two sets of lines on top of each other, and that's this vernier scale that we're actually going to be in reference to. Uh, the top is actually in inches. The bottom is in centimeters, if any of you take me for class for any reason. Obviously, we're only going to use the centimeter side. Uh, there's a little brass screw on top. You can actually use that to tighten it down and lock it. That comes in handy if you're going to pass this thing around, like to say your lab partner or something to compare it to. There's a little brass wheel over here. You can actually put your thumb on that and use it to move the caliper in and out and open it and close it. So, so that you get a little appreciation for it. Uh, I'm sure you know how to read a ruler, but most people, when they first show up in my presence, they usually can't. So I'm going to do something. We're already seeing when using a ruler, and I'm using the centimeter side of the ruler, the first problem you already know this is this. You have to try and line your ruler up, and I'm using this centimeter side of the ruler. You have to try and line your ruler up on the zero mark. So you've got a little, you've got a little error in your measurement right off the back, bat. Uh, excuse me, or a little lack of precision just because you know of trying to line this zero up. So now then, to actually read the ruler, now we need to come over here and actually kind of take a look a little bit further. Let me. I want to go for. A, black since what we got here so take a second and look where the edge of the object comes through to r2 good grief i can't talk so as we look at this i want you to notice something to me it's not actually dead on it's not actually dead on the line so it's a little in front of, and if you're having trouble, these are all tenths out through here. So this is one, and so that next line would be 1.1. So for this first measurement, it's not to 1.1. So I'm going to say it's 1.0, and then we have to do something. You estimate the last number with the ruler. Now somebody will say guess, usually in a class when we're doing this. And I'll be like, fine, you want to guess a number? Here. You, right now, over the internet, take a guess. What number am I thinking, 1 through 10? If you said 8, <coughs> you guessed the right number. Congratulations. Anyway, now that we're not playing guess anymore, I want you to do something. Look at where this comes and essentially pretend there are 10 dashes inside of there. And I'm sorry about the little swirly cursor I've got. I can't get rid of that. So pretend there are 10 dashes. So in other words, between the 1 and the point 0.1 that you see, you need to basically imagine like there are, it's broken down in these divisions. And what you're going to do is estimate where you think this falls. Now the thing is, there's more than one right answer to this. What I usually do is this. I look and see, is it in the middle or not? If it's dead in the middle, I'd say 1.05. 
obviously it's to the right of the middle. So I would probably estimate literally like 1.08 maybe. You might say, Mr. Cole, I think it's 1.07. Cool, you're still right. You might say it's 1.09. Oh, congratulations, you win as well. So that's why there's a little uncertainty in using the ruler. So here, let's do another one using the ruler because you definitely need to be able to use a ruler. So I'm lining it up on zero. And now we're going to try and estimate where the end of the object is. Well, it's definitely three point, and it comes after the third digit. So 3.3, and now estimate. And to me, it looks like it's almost dead in the middle. So I'm getting my last estimated digit. And now I'll come down here to the very last object on this page. And here, take a look at it. As soon as I quit wiggling it and get it to stay still. So same thing. You try and read where this comes through. Well, hopefully you're beating me on the screen. Two point, and if you look, it's between 2.2 .2 and 2.3. So it's 2.2, and to me, it's a little left of the center. So I'm going to say 2.23. Mr. Cole, I think it's 2.24. Cool, you're right. So again, that's a little bit of the problem in terms of using the cap of a, a ruler. With a caliper, you don't have that same error because you're going to literally close the jaws. Now, there's a website, uh, I want to study.org. Um, if you take a look, I will post the link to this uh, in the video or below the video. This is a great, especially if you're like teaching people to read the caliper, and you can change like what kind of a scale this is. Uh, my calipers are displayed like in this 0.1 format like this, so I like using this caliper. Now, one thing I want you to notice is this. On the virtual caliper, you have your zero marks on here. In order to read the caliper, it's all about finding the zero. On a real caliper, you usually don't have here. I'll pull up a little close-up. Like, here's the zero mark. It's that line out on the end. You don't have, like, the actual zero usually written on a real caliper. But one, this is actually really small. But that's what this literally means. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you could say ten, but really that just means zero again. Because what you'll find is, is this. If the first zero is lined up, then the second zero lines up too. So, But we'll talk about that in a second. So let's go back to this virtual caliper. And I encourage you, it's, this is a good way to play it. Matter of fact, you can use this. It'll actually show you the answers and everything else if you click the buttons up here. But here's an object, and we're going to put it in the jaws of the caliper. And all I'm going to do is close the caliper down upon it. And I actually don't like that measurement because I want to be a little bit I want to be a little bit harder for you to use on this first one or a little bit easier should I say and wow I keep making it with the same problem I'm trying to get like perfect all right so for this one and I wish I could draw on my screen screen but here's your veneer scale at the bottom Find where the zero is. If you can read a ruler, then you can learn to read a caliper. Find your zero line and just look to see where it falls on the scale above it. So here on my scale above it, there's three, there's four, and each of these lines are point ones. So if you look, the zero comes directly after the point four. So this measurement is 3.4 something. So now go across the vernier scale along the bottom. 3.4 what, Mr. Cole? Look across and look for two of these that align together. We're looking for alignment here. So the number one doesn't match anything. Two doesn't match. Three doesn't match. Uh-oh. Four and five are both really close. So you're going to have to make a pick which one is the best. Well, this is also part of the problem with using a computer to try and do this. But here's what I'm going to go with. I think the 4 across the bottom is the best number. So this answer will be 3.4, and then since the fourth number matches, 3.44. But there's, a, there's kind of like a rule. I would say an unwritten rule, but no, it's really a rule. Whenever you measure something, there's always a place for this last bit of uncertainty. 
So if you remember with the ruler, like here, we took this measurement and we knew it was between 2.2 and 2.3. And so we went and we added this little three out on the end to represent where it's at. So this last digit is an uncertain digit. Whenever you're making a measurement, there should always be an uncertain digit at the end. That's even true with the caliper. So, for example, if we were reading this, it would be 3.44. And since you're not estimating anything, you put a zero to follow that. So this answer would be 3.440. Ah, it's even displaying the answer down at the bottom. Oh, you cheeky monkey. Sorry, that just sounded really weird coming from a guy from Alabama. Anyway, here, let's change this object up. Let's shrink it down a little bit. And I just blew my window up massively huge. So there, see if I can try and get it back. Thank you. So let's get this object. And for some reason, it is not behaving. Probably because I'm in this video screen. I'm going to try and get it to behave. It usually does better than this. And now I'm going to close my jaws on it. Apparently, it is wigging out. It's a good app, but I've got it in a video window, so it's probably messing it up. Again, the little the URLs up at the top, I'll put it in the video description so you can use it. So this time, here's what I want you to do. Read the caliper. Two point, where does the zero line come? 2.1234. So the zero line comes, it's almost to 2.5, but it's not there. So what I want you to do is this say 2.4. Now go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 across the bottom. Which one lines up the best? Zero comes after 2.4. So 2.4. And if you say the ninth number, you're right. So the answer is 2.49. And then you need to do, you need to add a zero, which they're not doing in this little app that I'm using. So let's go and let's look at like three actual caliper pictures. And you take your chances with that. And hopefully you'll be good to go in terms of reading a caliper. You just need to practice a little bit. So here's what I want you to do. This is a picture of a real caliper actually being used. So I think this will be a little bit more beneficial to us. So here's the zero line, this very first line. And I want you to figure out where it comes after. Well, what's interesting is this. Now, this messes people up because they see the two and they'll say, this is two point something. This is not two point anything. The two goes with this line over here. So there's the two. So this is not 2, which means if it's not 2, it's got to be 1 point something. So now they're like, well, how do I know it's 1 point what? Easy. 1.4, look at this elongated hash line. So there's your 0.5. So this is 1.567. And now we got a question to make. That line is almost perfectly on the eighth line. So what do you do if the zero line perfectly matches the line above it? Well, you say 1.80, but you still have to estimate one more place, so you actually would write 1.800 centimeters down for your answer. Again, if you forgot, well, what's this up here? That is your inches. So for my class in particular, please ignore the inches part of this. All right, moving on. Let's do another one. Sorry the pictures aren't any better than they are. The light was a little bad. This one usually gives people trouble. So once again, find your zero line. And we see this time, oh, this is great. So this zero is directly after a three. So you should be saying, Mr. Cole, why would this give anybody any problems? Because it's directly after the three, which means there is 3.1 which means this zero line is not even past the 3.1. Well, that means this problem is 3.0, and now you need to play the lineup game. So 3.0, now count across the bottom. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and you're going to have to make a decision. I've got a little bit of angle in my view here. I think... Ooh, I don't know. 
That seven looks pretty good. I tell you what I'm going to do. I think it's the seventh line over. Uh, and wow, it's kind of funny. The seventh line over and the seventh line above line up. Reality is, I don't care what these numbers are up here. All I'm worried about is the numbers down on the bottom. So as I look across the bottom, it's the seventh line that appears to make a match. So I call this 3.07. Add one zero in there for my estimated digit. All right, last one. So find your zero mark. And so in this case, there's five, there's six. So I know this is five point something. So 5.1, 5.2, 5.3, where does the zero come? It comes between the two and the three. So this is 5.2, and now start counting your vernier scale. One, two, three, four. Ooh, what do you think? Five? I feel pretty good about five. 5.25, and then estimate one number, so I put a zero in there, centimeters. And that's how we read the caliper. So hopefully you got a pretty solid idea on reading the caliper, and you should be ready to do our first lab where we'll take more measurements with the caliper. And the best thing you can do is just practice with the caliper. So we'll talk to you later. Bye.